in her latest book titled The Gospel According to Wanda B. Lazarus, writer, producer and storyteller Lynn Joffe takes us on a Jewish mythology adventure. The novel follows the many lives of the immortal main character named Wanda, who's described as a sexually charged, foul-mouthed, free-willing muso as she enjoys her serial reincarnations. Now, this book is an exploration of one woman's journey of her history of being a white Jewish person and how she moves through the ages of a patriarchal era while on a quest to give feminists a voice. Let's now rope in Lynn into this conversation to tell us more about what this book is all about. And she joins us now via Zoom. Lynn, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning and thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure, Lynn. Let's start with uh, where the idea and the inspiration to write a book that uh, sort of explores the ancient mythological figure of the wandering Jew as a female. Well, um, I came to South Africa when I was only 14 and I didn't really understand my identity and having been a white Jewish female. It's followed me around my whole life and I thought that I would explore the idea of this anti-Semitism has existed almost since humans began. And I came across the myth many, many years ago and the wandering Jew was always a smelly, hook-nosed outcast. And, and being always othered because I'm a woman, because I'm white, because I'm Jewish, I wanted to explore it through the myth of history. But what if it wondering Jew was a woman, that mm -hmm. would change the whole story. And what if she was a pretty woman? And what if she was a musical woman? And what if she had was a woman with agency through the ages? Yes. So I kind of combined the history of the, the mythology with, with a new take on how to be a woman throughout history and in the modern age. Unpack for us, if you can, Lynn, uh, this book's interesting cover and why you decided on the title, The Gospel According to Wanda B. Lazarus. Well, um, I did an MA through WITS and then um, we had to actually put a proposal together and I always had an interest in the, the, the ancient feminine and I actually found this gypsy girl, the, the, the book cover has a glyph of the gypsy girl of Gazantiep, which is a Turkish um, artifact. And the moment I saw her and because um, she has no mouth, on the picture. Mm -hmm. And I thought I wanted to give her a voice. So she was a perfect symbol. And then she became Wanda. It's interesting in the writing process how you start off almost with personal stories and then it mythologizes and fictionalizes. So Wanda B. Lazarus, um, Wanda obviously play on wandering and Lazarus as a play on the rebirth and the rebirth. And it was a nice kind of Hebraic Jewish kind of name, but it's obviously a satirical, it's a satirical story. So she's one to be Lazarus, and um, I, I'm so very grateful to my publisher for getting the rights to use the, the image on the cover of the book. And I guess the key words you've just mentioned there, uh, wandering and uh, reincarnation, and the main character, Wanda, just take us through her story and her journey in this book. I mean, we first meet her as a bit of a shy and a vulnerable team, but then she sort of transcends and becomes a heroine. Yes, you see, um, there's a whole thing about the hero's journey, which has also been an ancient thing for the male. I wanted to discover the, the heroine's journey, which is more of a circular idea. And it's the idea of return and the idea of coming back over and over. She's accidentally, I don't want to give a spoiler alert, mm -hmm. accidentally cursed with immortality, which is another thing of the wandering Jew lives forever. Um, so she had actually been around in 33 AD at the time of Christ. Um, and because she's accidentally cursed by her Rav Yossi, she finds herself dying over and over and over again. So she's she starts off in, in Judea in 33 AD, and every about 300 years, I've, I covered 2,000 years of history in 11 chapters. So every 300 mm -hmm. years, she, she grows a little more. Um, in, in, in the story of the hero myth, obviously there's, there's a, a coming back to oneself. So through the 2,000 years of history, she, she encounters different cultures cultures where obviously there, there have been Jewish people in, in most cultures over, over history. So as she actually grows incrementally, because she's a, she's a little bit um, ignorant and a little bit innocent, she eventually learns how to write, she eventually learns how to live inside, if you like, the patriarchal world on her own terms. And speaking of which, man, as I uh, page through the book, uh, you know, there's Wanda's urge to embark on this mission to liberate women and rid them of the patriarchy in their different societies. Speak to us about that. Sure. How, how much time have we got? It's, it's interesting to me because I've never really lived my life as a, as a woman under the boot of patriarchy. But because, mm. as you see, I'm not 
baby anymore. Um, things like um, being accused of being Jewish and not quite understanding what people were asking me when they asked me if I was Jewish. So there's there's this thing of it's, it's an irony to me that that devout Christians and then you get um, anti-Semitic Christians whose own God is a Jew. Um, fi I find that very interesting. And then as an embodiment of my people, if you'd like to call it that, although I'm, I'm extremely diverse, I wasn't raised in the faith to say, you know, I'm a Jewish person, but my identity and her identity were very much connected. And as I, as I grew in my life, realizing I am a woman, I am a pale African, I am a Jewish person, but I'm not your average Jewish person. I, I, yeah. I, and, and, and she, through the ages also, she takes on what she thinks is basically unfair, which, which, so, which I do too, which you do too. So I've taken her because my culture is, is, is of, of the Jewish Ashkenazi historical yeah. faith. I can't yeah. be any other person, but as I have grown in my life, and I mean, I, I don't want to tell you my age, but you can see that I'm not a baby. So through my life, as my experience, <laughs> um, seeing how, you know, women were paid less than men. I was paid less than my art director when I was a, a little copywriter. I was, um, there, there's, there's almost an inbuilt prejudice towards females, an inbuilt prejudice towards um, people, you know, it, 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 we, I'm in South Africa. I'm a South African dedicated, wonderful, love my country. But because I am a pale musician, I've, I've been in many, many, many bands where I'm the only pale musician in the band. And there's a little prejudice. So I wanted to use the Jewish history, if you like, or the history of my people to show that really in every culture, there's somebody on the outside. Everybody feels other to their culture at some point, even other to their families or other to their to their own. And finding my story through Wonder Story was actually a very, um, I wouldn't say healing, but very transcendent experience for me as she wanders through the ages, as I wander through the ages. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. It's such an interesting question. You certainly have. You certainly have, uh, Lynn. I mean, uh, we see uh, Wanda being cursed with immortality. Well, that's a rather bizarre use of the word curse and immortality in the same sentence. Now, we just break down for us uh, how you created these episodes of death that uh, Wanda experiences and the causes thereof. Whoa, how long have you got? Um, okay, so <laughs> that's a real, wow, we really need to sit down for an hour. I um, know, right? When I, <laughs> yeah, when, when I, so, so, so I went back to Wits because I realized that I needed the, the, the structure and discipline of, the, of, of, of a course. We had to create the proposal and then we had to write the, the work and then we had to write a reflective essay. So while so I wrote, because I had the experimentation, the delight of experimentation at Varsity, I wrote her character first. She had to actually have a voice. I spent a year creating the most bizarre situations I could find. And then as I researched more, I found strange events in history. So for example, the, I don't know if you knew this, there was there was a synagogue in Kochi in, in India in the year 666. I found that absolutely fascinating. So the more I researched that and then placed her in context, and, and, you know, people have said to me, you know, why is there so much sex in the book? Why is there so much cheekiness in the book? There's almost a sense, as any writer of fiction will know, where you sudden, not suddenly, gradually, your mm -hmm. own life story becomes a fiction. And then she told me what to write. So I, I'm not responsible at all for all the sex. She was the one who, who, who decided <laughs> that because agency with women is also, you know, with little women wait to be asked. She doesn't wait to be asked. She's actually the the um, trickster in a little bit of a way, archetypally, where men or the world around her, not just men, where, where society imagines her to be inferior and um, not wanting what she wants, what Wanda wants. So in the situations that I created, once I'd created the character, then I created the stories around her, then it became a bit James Bond because a story has to have action. It has to have stakes. It has to have denouement. All of all of the right storytelling effects. And um, in fact, at one point, I had wonder almost having a sort of a I wouldn't say gangbang on TV, but there was there was a, a kind of a, a situation where she was in a very great danger mm -hmm. of 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 a kind of group scene that was not going to end well and and the people the, the people in my varsity class said no 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 she can't she, nothing wrong can happen to her so yeah. when she dies each time i mean she's 
uh, spoiler alert, she's stabbed, yeah. she's hanged, she's poisoned. She there, there's oh, I, I, I kind of went into how many forms of we're out of time, Lynn, unfortunately. Yes. But uh, what I quite like about this book is uh, resonance that uh, the readers can strike with wonder. I know that there's a wonder in, uh, you know, in every circle of their lives, like in everyone in their circle, there's always a wonder out there that they know of. And, and how much of yourself is embodied in this book, especially uh, uh, the main character, Wanda? Funny you should ask, um, one of my candidates in the MA said to me, you, mis you, mis you misspelt memoir. I said, what do you mean? He said, you said this was a novel, but actually it's a story of your life. A, a lot of my own life has been woven into this. Um, I am an independent woman in a very happy marriage, for example. I am a South African who wasn't really born here. So the otherness of Wanda is very much the otherness of me, but I think she's more interesting, probably better musically trained than I am, and she's got a lot of a, a lot wider experience. So yes, there's a lot of me in her and a lot of her in me. Mm -hmm. You know, Lynn, uh, you've, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And uh, you really have opened our eyes to so many different issues and taken us back to history, that, uh, the issues that uh, we're really not aware of. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very, very much. A big thank you to Lynn Joffe for joining us this morning on Zoom to talk about her latest book titled The Gospel According to Wanda B. Lazarus.